out. It's just that I'll end up with with the, the increases being these additions plus the 25,000. So why is it off by 5,000 though? What happened there? Well, if in the prior accounting system, I was using a full term accounting system as of the cutoff date of the prior period, which would have been if I go into the checking account, 1231 of the prior period, this beginning balance uh, went in there on, uh, let's make the date uh, 123123 to, okay, so this 25,000 was in our prior accounting system as of the cutoff date. If we had a bank statement as of 123123, then the ending balance on that bank statement we would presume would be 30,000, the beginning balance on our current bank statement. And that didn't match what's in our books, which is quite natural if we're using a normal accounting process because there were outstanding checks and deposits. So, so now we have these outstanding checks and deposits from the prior accounting system that are messing up our beginning balance that we're trying to start from, from one point, January 1st of 2024. So what do we do about that? Well, one thing you can do is that if those amounts cleared, you'll actually see them in the current time period. Meaning if there was 5,000 in checks that didn't clear last time, they're going to clear in the current month, possibly, <laughs> or else they can remain outstanding. So for example, these two, you can see these two amounts right here add up to 5,000. That's the difference. So what's going to happen is these two amounts are actually not in the current activity. I'm not going to find them in the activity and be able to check them off on the payments because I didn't enter them in the current month. They were entered in the prior month prior to when we started QuickBooks Online in the prior accounting system. So, so there's a couple ways we can fix that then. I could, I could just not check them off, right? I could say, okay, well, if I don't check that off and I just keep this at 25,000, those two amounts will net out, right? So the, the, if I, because this is 30,000 and then there's 5,000 difference down here. So if I put it on the books at 25,000 and I don't check these off, then I, I will be able to reconcile exactly. That's one method. It's not perfect, however, because that means your reconciliation is kind of a is kind of messy because you don't get to see that these checks cleared. What we would like to see is that these checks cleared from the prior accounting system and they cleared in the current period. So what we should do is actually enter these checks into the system as of the prior period, uh, prior to our cutoff date. And whenever the checks were entered or possibly we enter them as 1231 and then, and then we'll be able to check them off as cleared. And we change the beginning balance up top to what it should be 25 to 30,000. In other words, we change this number to 30,000 or we make another journal entry for 5,000 so I can check them both off to get to 30,000 as our beginning balance. And then we, we write the cleared we, we put in, in place the checks, the two checks that were written in the prior period that brought our balance down to 25,000. And then we, we check them off in the current time period. So that's kind of the issue. That's what we'll have to deal with with the first bank reconciliation. Now note the first easy method that we talked about is like, well, I just won't check these off and then I'll just check off the 25,000 and it'll work. That will only work if these two amounts cleared and the current time period. It may well be the case that you have a bunch of checks that will never clear because they, they, they're, there's something a problem there. They're outstanding checks that got entered twice or something and they've been outstanding forever. So if they don't clear, then, then that method's not gonna work. You're gonna have to do something else to fix it, right? You're gonna have to basically enter those checks into the system and then void them properly so that you don't mess up the prior uh, period balances, right? You don't mess up retained earnings. So, so just keep that in mind, like, like you, you, a lot of times what will happen is people will have this problem and then they're like, oh, well, I magically can reconcile it, tied itself out that, but that would only happen if these two actually cleared in the current period. If they don't clear, you're going to still end up, you're going to still end up with a problem. Okay. So once that happens though, once we take care of that beginning balance problem, then the following period will be really easy because this 61, 241, 85 will then be the cleared balance. 
and in the following period, then that's going to be the beginning balance, which has to tie out because we tied out exactly to the ending balance last time. And then we can just take everything off and everything should work properly and it should be easy to reconcile. Uh, just remember that when we reconcile, that this bit here is the process of reconciling, getting this down to zero uh, allows us to generate the reports, which are the bank reconciliation showing a report that will give us the bank balance as of a point in time, and then the exact difference of the outstanding checks and deposits to get to reconcile to the book balance. All right, so that's the general uh, the general issue that we'll have to deal with. So we're, we'll start to do the bank reconciliation next time by just going in and ticking and tying off the deposits and then we'll do the checks and then we'll see that we'll have to add a few items and then we'll deal with that beginning balance issue.